Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so I've been hired for a mission. A mission to go to Setagaya and check out this watch, a Grand Seiko SBGM001. I'm gonna take some video of it. And this is for a viewer that flicked me some money to check it out. All right, so this is Setagaya, which is in Western Tokyo. And the shop we're looking for should be straight down there. And uh, let's go check it out. All right, mission accomplished. And the staff was uh, really nice. Uh, it's an older woman working there and a younger guy that was helping me out. And uh, all right, a little bit about the piece. Now I'll show it to you in detail in a minute, but no box, no papers. It has been serviced by uh, a watchmaker they use, not through Grand Seiko. It has been polished and um, even though it's been polished there, uh, there are some uh, noticeable, not noticeable, but there are some nicks on it. And apparently there's a, a scratch in the glass. I couldn't see it. He kept trying to point it out, but uh, I mean, it's a, it's a good looking piece. Uh, clearly not brand new looking. Um, and again, no box, no papers. Uh, the GMT function worked fine, and uh, yeah, let's take a look at it in detail. This is the Grand Seiko SBGM001. This is a steel automatic watch with a GMT function. It was Grand Seiko's first ever GMT function watch with a fourth hand. Of course, you guys know I love a four-hander, but Grand Seiko probably could have been a little more creative with it aesthetically because it looks suspiciously similar to the black dialed Rolex Explorer 216.570. Uh, you can see it borrows the most distinctive feature of the Rolex, the fixed steel 24 hour bezel, which really couldn't be more similar in its execution down to the arrowheads pointing towards the center of the dial that mark the odd hours on the 24 hour scale. Okay. the Arrowheads are a little slimmer on the Seiko, but the Rolex inspiration is pretty clear. Uh, it comes on a oyster style bracelet. That's another similarity. It really differs from the Explorer 2 though when you get to the dial. It's got Dauphine hands, a red 24 hour hand with its own distinctive shape and a straight second hand, no loom on any of the hands. The indices are rectangular and there's a frame date window at the three o'clock position. Again, this was Grand Seiko's very first GMT and it came out in 2002. Not sure when this actual piece was made though. And this iteration ran until January of 2010. The movement allows for the local hour hand and the 24 hour hand to be separated. And the local hour hand is a jump hour hand. So it functions exactly like an Explorer 2. And this watch ran until January of 2010 when it was discontinued. And in 2011, its successor, the SBGM025 was released and it came with a new movement with a longer power reserve and a display case back, which this watch doesn't have. On the SBGM025, this watch's predecessor, the dial was changed to white, the 24 hour hand became blue, the Dauphine hands got a bit of black paint in the center, the shape of the indices were a little less blocky, and between the minute marks, hash marks were added, and the font on the 24 hour fixed steel bezel changed to a less Explore 2-esque font, which this watch has. Aside from that, they're pretty similar. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this specific piece. Now, in the end, it's the producer of this video's decision whether he wants to get it or not. Um, but let's just talk about what I would do and sort of my, my thoughts on it when I was looking at it and when I was handling it. All right, gotta keep in mind, no box, no papers. I know this is a, a very first GMT Grand Seiko, but if you're looking at it from a collector's point of view, 
then those are things you really need. And it's not really that cheap considering it's just watch only, all right? Now, it has been serviced. They polished it. Look, nobody does a better polishing job than Seiko. And while it looks okay, I tell you, if you look at pictures of this watch on, on the internet, there's a sharpness and a crispness of the case and the bracelet. And you can just see that this is not the kind of polishing that Grand Seiko would do. And so I feel like this needs a Grand Seiko polish. Take a look at the clasp. You can see that they couldn't get in between the top and the bottom part of the insignia and the clasp. And even the clasp, you know, it's got little nicks on it that they really couldn't do anything with. I mean, I, I don't think they wanted to polish that GS off. And so they just sort of left it alone. And, um, and so again, it, it looks all right. But again, when you compare it to you know, the way it came out or the way it would have looked if it had been serviced by Grand Seiko, then, you know, you can see that this watch needs help, all right? And it's okay, but it's not GS okay. So, all right, let's take a look at the functionality of the movement. So I'm unscrewing the crown. It's got a screw down crown and I give it a few winds. It's got a, a sort of a zippy wind. All right, so winding it in the first position, I pull the crown out to the second position and that hacks the local hour hand and you can go backwards or forwards. And you can see this local hour hand is a jump hour hand and the watch keeps running. So if you cross a time zone, you can just pop out that local hour hand, jump it to your to your correct hour and you're good to go. Doesn't have quick set date. You cross the 12 to change the date. And to change the 24 hour hand, you pull it out to the third position. That hacks the second hand and stops the time. And then you can set the 24 hour hand to wherever you want. And then later, if you need to tweak the local hour hand, you just put it back in the second position and put it to the correct hour. Pushing in the crown, I'm gonna screw it down and we're done here. All right, guys, well, let me know what you think. If you were this gentleman who uh, commissioned this uh, investigative video, would you buy this Grand Seiko? Let me know. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time. This train does not go to Ueno or Mikuri. Passengers going to Ueno or Mikuri change to a train bound for Ueno and Aoko. Bueno, por ahí pasó con una que salió. Auto eso, bueno, gente, el charo para